love for each other. We need to have love for Christ. We need to have love for the church. This is the way how we're going to become one. We have the privilege today of welcoming His Grace to the campus of Hellenic College and Holy Cross along with some wonderful students that have traveled literally throughout the world on mission trips. Your Grace, nice to have you with us here today on the campus. Thank you very much, Father. Talk to us about the creation of a new diocese and the fact that you are an indigenous bishop now in Africa. We've never had any other Kenyan bishop. So from that time, it's like 35 years, uh, we've been in prayer, praying that one day, one time, the Holy Spirit will guide the Holy Synod so that we can, uh, the Kenyan church can have the indigenous bishop. So it's been a period of preparation, mm -hmm. of prayer, and fasting and, and hard work. And, and finally, as you say, last year is when uh, the Patriarch of Alexandria created uh, actually two dioceses. Mm -hmm. uh, the Diocese of uh, uh, Kisumu and Western Kenya and the Diocese of Nyeri and Mount Kenya. So I am the Bishop of Nyeri and Mount Kenya. So there's great joy then in Kenya, I would imagine. Absolutely. People so are really very happy. And for the spreading of the gospel of Christ. Yes, yes. We have uh, four students with us from Hellenic and Holy Cross. They're no strangers uh, to mission work. We want to thank all of you for coming and being with us today. They participated in OCMC Evangelism Mission Team to Turkana, Kenya, last spring. Uh, alongside of them were key figures in OCMC, including Father Martin and Presbytera Rene Ritzi. Alex Goodwin, and even His Grace Bishop Athanasius Akunda of all Western Kenya. Uh, you look a little different from when you left for that trip because <laughs> when you left, you had actually buzzed all of your hair off your head. Yes, I indeed did cut my hair. Why did you do that? You were afraid of bugs or what happened? I was uh, getting ready for the heat. Oh, the heat. <laughs> getting ready for the heat. Our, our goal was to, to teach and to missionize um, three different villages in the Turkana. And, um, we were able to missionize and evangelize in a way that the, that the early church did. And we taught who was Christ. What we would do is we would get a background of what do these people know? And we would try and connect Christ to them. And so it was like fitting a puzzle piece. And they had the Old Testament, basically, view of it. And they just didn't have the redemptive factor. They didn't have that final piece. And so what we did was we presented that final puzzle piece to them. We taught them who is Christ, um, why did he come. That really connected with them. And I think that was the key of the mission, was to really connect and speak a language with them that they, that they could understand. Topsy um, is organic. You know, it's not something that's rigid, mm -hmm. open, and it's, it's supposed to be inclusive. And so the differences were beautiful. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So you respect the culture where you go into yeah. and you learn, but then as you said, you just pick up that piece and you enter the piece that's one. Uh, Nico, you've gone to Albania, mm -hmm. you've gone to Indonesia, which yes. is a mostly Muslim country. Yes. So each of these mission fields, it's really interesting, has different challenges, I mean different cultures. Um, so far these three countries, those two in Kenya, are on three different continents mm -hmm. and it's the one faith orthodoxy responding to each of them and participating in each of them. But in a lot of ways, you know, as, the, as you see the church and the church's work in each of them, you really see how universal, uh, you know, the message of Christ is to all of us. There's differences, of course. Were you ever frightened when you went to these countries? When you're on the mission field, that apostolic sort of mm -hmm. work where, I mean, the miracles go right along with it. And you really feel like the Holy Spirit is there with you. Um, and that takes away the fear. Well, one of the most uh, incredible things about Kenya, you know, the, the extremes that we saw there. At the beginning of the week, we were in Nairobi. Uh, we stayed at the seminary. Everything is established, and you know, they're preparing seminarians, and it's incredible. But then a couple of days later, we were out in the Turkana Desert visiting <laughs> these tribes that, you know, never have never heard of Christianity and haven't even seen foreigners before. It really feels like the frontier of, of, of mission work in, in the Orthodox Church. Sure. Okay, let's talk for a minute about sure. um, cultural experience and also pastoring people creatively. Uh, we see when the missionaries come back, we see scenes from liturgies in Africa that we cannot relate to because we say, where is this joy? How are these people up and dancing? 
and it's different for us. That doesn't make it any less holy. So could you talk to us about that, the, the cultural, the diversity that goes on and how orthodoxy comes in and actually baptizes that culture? Yes, I mean, we are, we are as Africans, we are very charismatic people. Hmm. We love that. We are charismatic, <laughs> we, we are aggressive. And um, now here is the faith that it connects so much, uh, relates so much with our culture. Mm -hmm. And so we try to see how, you know, we can have you know, a middle point so that um, we don't feel that uh, something has been taken away from us, mm -hmm. but actually we feel that something has been added into you know, our culture and be transformed. And uh, what we have done is to you know, during the liturgical celebration to have some, you know, uh, singing, to have some dancing, for example, you know, coming, when they're coming to receive Holy Communion, you know, we allow them to, you know, to sing and to dance with joy as they come to receive Holy Communion. And it's, it's a very good expression. It connects so well with that charismatic spirit that it is in us. I remember during my enthronement, um, we had introduced even before the coming of the Patriarch to have um, during the, the the kiss of peace. Actually, before that, when we say, "Let us love one another," so that in one mind we may confess. So we realized that it is time for people to explode with joy, to you know. Uh, to sing and to love one another, you know, to express that actually in, in the practical sense of it, you know, you are able to greet one another, you can even cross over the other side and, and say hi to your friend. And so there is some songs that we do also sing, and if I can remember very well, there is one that says, let us, you know, greet one another, let us hold one another's hand as we work together into the kingdom of God. And, and, and when that one is sung, you can see the joy in the faces of the people. Mm -hmm. So when the Patriarch was there, he, he was surprised because he was expecting us to sing, you know, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But he had some explosion of, you know, uh, songs and all that. And instead of continuing to greet the clergy inside, he left them and came outside <laughs> and he danced yes, with the people. people. Yes. Well, something to be said. Yeah. So that, that that is how it is connecting. Another part yes. of it is during my throne. Uh, you know, after my enthronement, they were able to do that at home in the village, and they had all these you know traditional you know uh, costumes and all that, just to make me belong to them, yes. because in a way. I could not go back to my village and speak as a man of authority when they have not actually given me that authority themselves. Ooh, so they have to give me that authority of speaking, of, 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 of being respected as an elder. And so they had to do that. Now I can go. Wherever I go, they respect me. They give me the first place of honor. They say, you know, the elder has come and they can listen to me. So that's let me stop important. you there for a minute yeah. because that's that's very profound for our, us to understand. So you're given the authority by the church, but then the people also give you that authority to be able to guide them going forward. Yes. That is what we call even at the ordination, the oxios, the worthy. Yes. Would you recommend to other students to go on a mission trip? Absolutely. I mean, I would recommend it to anyone. I've been to Kenya uh, about a handful of times now. In Kenya, we've been a part of building a church, a school, um, and different evangelization trips. So Kenya and Orthodoxy here in America. Did you see similarity? Did you see a thread anywhere? Um, I think the thread, of course, is Christ. Mm -hmm. you know, and it's that actualization, and it's his fullness, and his revelation. And, and when you see the people in doesn't matter if they're in the busy city of Chicago or if they're in the extreme desert of Turkana. You know, when they hold the grace of our Lord and Savior, there's no. It's the only identifying factor mm -hmm. you know, in this life. So the fact that most of these people are nomadic and right. some of them may even walk two days just to get to church on Sunday. Sure. You know, across 100 degree, 110 degree 
desert. They walk all the way. We have 22%, we say in America, who actually come to church on Sunday regularly. So here we are, folks who are nomads, who are crossing the desert in 100 degree temperature and coming to church. And we see these things. And honestly, this, this gives us hope. The clergy there is incredible. Some, I've met a priest in the Turkana region who serves about five parishes, and he doesn't even have a vehicle. And you know, he rides around on a dirt bike across the desert. And he, he sustained a, a very uh, traumatic injury to his chest when he was younger. And so, you know, he goes through incredible pain and suffering just to get to each one of his parishes when he can. So, Theophania, you're the one lady in the room here. You enjoyed your visit to Turkana so much that you went back on a second trip. The OCMC trip was a youth retreat held directly in the Kisumu Diocese under His Grace Athanasius Sakunda himself. Uh, tell us what that was like. We're given topics to prepare to teach to the youth in the entire Kenyan region. I've learned that on every mission trip that I go on, you can prepare as much as you want for the trip, but once you get there, all bets are off. Like you just you can't, there's really no way to prepare. And 800 youths came. They brought their stuff, they came on buses, and then they sponsored this. And there had to have been at least 30 clergy. Sometimes we had translators, other times we didn't. So was that different from the Turkana experience? With the trips was that the Turkana people, they had a lot of the Old Testament. They didn't know Christ. And with this trip um, in the Kasumu Diocese, they very much knew who he was. And they, they, they were Orthodox themselves. Trying to, you know, connect with people that are also Orthodox and learn about it at the same time. I think everybody should have a chicken experience. Why is that? Because it's just, it's so raw and beautiful and conquering not only like the weather and, and the way that the land is there, you know, driving through dried up massive riverbeds and then meeting the people. I mean, I think just that experience of two cultures coming together is intense. What did you learn about the way orthodoxy is received by the youth of Kenya in comparison to that of those here in America? I think the main difference is the culture there. The African people, the Kenyan people, are very spiritual people just from the way that they live their life. And I think that orthodoxy really fits well. And I think that's different in America. I think America, we are prone to wanting to have our own ideas and our own opinions, being diverse and breaking from you know, that track of, of this is what the church is teaching. Mm -hmm. And in Kenya, because they have this this inner love, this deep joy that um, His Grace was talking about with the dancing and coming together. You know, they want to know every little thing that they can. Reminds you of my trip to Manathos last year when I met with the elders and I said to them, um, why is everyone smiling and why are all the monks being so kind? I mean, I, I don't experience this often. And the abbot looked at me, uh, several abbots I met with, they said, well, Father, they don't need you for anything. They see in you the image and the likeness of Christ. And therefore, they love you. And I believe that in the purity of the spirit of his grace and the purity of the spirit that you all went over, uh, that you experienced that image and likeness of Christ in every person that you met. We want to thank you all for being here, especially your grace. Uh, as our alum of our school, again, we're extremely proud of you. Thank you. Um, this is Father Christopher Metropolis coming to you from the Hill of Hope, a place where we hope that you will continue to be inspired all the days of your life. Thank you for being with us. I would like also to thank our friends from America who have been very close to us, who have been exactly very much close to us. Yeah.